So we move on to this shot and we've got some lighting going on here. Inside the car, it's not just the car interior lights. We actually have a Lycos panel sitting on the back seat, boosting up into the ceiling. Now that you know, you can probably see that it's really bright around that area just there. And then we've also got Ben standing somewhere off over to the side that way with another Lycos panel just giving a little bit of something. And you can see on the ground just here, there's just a little bit of something coming in so that we're not completely down and there's a bit of definition on me and that kind of stuff. Works well enough and you can see we've got that blue vibe. So between these shots, it sort of feels like everything's occupying the same world, which is what we were going for. So just exploring the node tree we've got just here, we've got a bit of sharpening on the last one. And if we zoom in, you can see that that is very subtle. I tend to go for the option of pulling the blur down just a couple of degrees to give me my sharpening. This one just here is just a very slight correction to the colors. Very, very slight. We've got our LUT just there, which is doing the heavy lifting. And then just a bit of noise reduction as well. And if you zoom right in, you can see the noise reduction is definitely doing the work there to make everything clean enough to actually use. Because without that noise reduction, it does feel a little bit noisy. And because we've got snow in there as well, you don't want it to feel too much like there's just this static of everything going on. We want the snow to be nicely defined. So by having the noise reduction on there, keeps the snow defined, the sharpening helps with that. And then we've got enough light just about to sell the effect of this shot. From here, we're shooting into the back of the car and you can see on the top of the headrests, that's the Lycos panel bouncing into the roof of the car and just giving everything enough of an edge. So we've got an edge on the tripod. It's important because it's black on black. So we need that edge to pick everything out and on my hand and then on the top just there as well. And we've got a little bit of an edge light on me coming through there as well. So without that panel in there, it really would have been impossible to shoot this. And they're so handy just having a battery powered system that you can use and get shots like this. Even though these shots are on screen for a second at most, they do need to be strong enough they sit within the context of the rest of the film. So having that light in there really helped. Now I'm gonna skim through a couple of these shots because there's not really too much going on. This is another early morning shot, but we did have sun in the sky, so didn't have to worry so much with that. Here, we've got a couple of little details actually I'll just pick out. So at the end of the chain, I've got a slight pop on the reds because everything Manfrotto branded has that red kick. So as you can see, it's a little bit dull without that, but by bringing that red kick in, it just draws attention to it, makes it a little bit more vibrant. It's fairly subtle until you turn it on and off, but it's definitely there. Here we have a little bit of a boost to the area around here so we can start to pick out the branding and also just raise the red level on that section as well a little bit more. And that is with a power window. And if I play that out, you can see that it's tracked onto me just there. Same story, we're just going into the tracker, drawing the power window on and then letting it track out. Resolves tracking really is that good now that you can just take these shots, throw a power window on and it will just stick to it like glue. The LUT just here is doing the heavy lifting. And then we just got a tiny bit of noise reduction on there as well because I'm boosting some of the shadows there. So you probably can't tell so much on this one because it's fairly subtle, but the noise reduction is just playing and tidying things up a tiny bit. We've got a similar story on the bag just here. And this one's quite interesting because we're getting a lot of light from the sky just here. Basically the courtyard of our building isn't really catching any direct sunlight. So it's only skylight at this point. And the light coming from the sky can contain quite a lot of infrared. So in situations like this, we see that there's actually a lot of infrared contamination that the sensor's picking up. Now you can get around this with an IR cut filter, but there wasn't one on the camera in this situation. We are getting that slight contamination of black tones just here. To get around this, I've tracked around with another qualifier. You can see I've drawn that around with the curves tool, and then I have just gone in, tracked on with the window setting in the tracker, and done a little bit of correction. Gone into curves, pulled the blacks down, made it a little bit darker, and gone into the primaries, pulled the saturation down, and then I have just adjusted to pull some of the red out of that, and it's very effective. The bag genuinely does look like that. It doesn't look like that. So you do have to think about this. When you're working with a brand and the brand has specific colors, especially where things need to look correct because that's how the product looks and it's the product you're selling, you gotta be aware of that. So making sure this looked right, although it's a minor point when not selling the bag, it was important that I made sure that was clean and actually the right color. These are pretty simple. Just doing a slight correction just there. I wanted it to feel a little bit earlier in the morning than it was just there, so made it a bit bluer. 
and just pulled the levels down ever so slightly. Lots doing the heavy lifting, bring the colors in. Again, very similar story just here. Nothing dramatic, just making things a little bit denser and darker. <laughs> 